Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Max and Juan cast. Max, it's Sunday night, it's late night, it's technically almost Monday, early in the morning. How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. Got back from Vegas, was winning some money at the tables, almost did the show from the fucking casino. <laughs> Big Vegas, you Big in Vegas. territory? Oh, bro, a lot. Of, dude, okay, first of all, Uber driver from the airport. <laughs> to the hotel was talking shit about Henry Ruggs the whole way there. I was like, yeah. He's like, fucking Raiders, bro. All they do is bring problems here. I was like, damn. He's like an old man, so he yeah. wasn't feeling it, but I was like, dang, dog. One, one got you down, player. <laughs> you know what's funny about that is when I went to go to Kansas City to go watch the Raiders, uh, me and my brother, we were on the way... I want to say it was on the way from the airport. We took a a uh, Uber, and the guy was a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He had like some talk show radio like on, and he was just like, "Yeah, fuck that dude, Tyree Kill." Like I'm like wow. I just could not. Yeah, like I could not support. Like he wasn't a Chiefs fan because they drafted Tyree Kill, and this was like I it was like a year in, rookie. right? I was like, Three. yeah. A rookie or or second year Tyreek, and I was just like, damn, like I feel you, bro. Like sometimes fans just they don't rock with that kind of stuff, and like I I can see it. But he was going in, bro. Like he, he was like, I fucking hate the fact that like the whole crowd be like Tyreek, Tyreek. I was just like, shit. I was like, low key, fuck the Chiefs too, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's good, man. That's good. You went to Vegas. Uh, a lot of Raiders fans. A lot of Raiders stuff. A lot of Raiders. Like went to the Nike store. A lot of like NFL stuff. NFL draft was there, so they had a bunch of like draft stuff, which was cool. Yeah, but uh, not a football podcast, unfortunately. Even <laughs> though you was in the Vegas, hopefully Vegas will get an NBA team sooner. Yeah, they're supposed to get later. a baseball team. They got a WNBA team. Sky's the limit, yeah. man. But uh, two words, Max. Game seven. We had two of them today. And unfortunately, it didn't go as planned for some of these teams. It didn't go as planned as far as me. I was so excited to watch these two games. And there were flops. Straight up, they were fucking flops. They were not any stretch of the imagination of a good game. Not even early. Uh, a Bucks and Celtics game. Was First good half early. was cool. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I was I was satisfied with one of the results of the game, and I was really upset with the other because, man, I I pulled from Milwaukee, even though I think I picked Boston just because no Middleton, man. And this was a game you needed Middleton in. And it was, you're not going to win any game seven where you shoot 30 or you shoot, what, four for 30 from three. You shoot, And the other team is just Grant Williams has a Kelly Olenek type game. Game seven yeah. just... You know that's that's what you got to count on for game sevens. The star, like either the stars are going to play well, or there's that one fucking role player who's like, "Holy shit, tonight's my night." And As Shaq likes to say, "The others." Yeah, the others, man. Grant Williams, like he's not the reason they won, but man, it helps when you have a guy chipping a career high in a, like the biggest game of his freaking life. Man, he led this team to scoring. I was Gord Tatum. Yeah, uh, he was amazing, dude. The the Celtics shot the lights out. Uh, you said twenty one threes. If you guys don't know, that is an NBA play 22 record. 22, 22 threes. Wow. Out of 55, yeah. that's 40 percent, bro. You're not gonna, you know, and the <laughs> Bucks are stupid, right? We've always like, you know, we kind of give them a pass because they want to chip last year. Their whole philosophy is like, we'll let them shoot threes. Well, man, you can't let fucking guys shoot wide open threes once they're rolling. It's like Terrence Mann last year, Rudy Gobert. Like, bro, you can't let him shoot that shot anymore. He's already hit like eight of them. He's he's gonna make it. He's in, he's already comfortable. And um, I thought the game personally was just horribly officiated. Correct. Yeah. 
It was terrible. Um, like we said, the first half it was it was a close one. I want to say it was a it was a two point game about to go into the half. Giannis is dribbling the ball down court. Marcus Smart strips him. It's a loose ball and at half court. Marcus Smart has possession. Giannis fouls him and he does the old fucking flopping and tries to act like I'm shooting a half court shot, bro. I'm in shooting motion. Gives him three free throws at the end of the half. I thought that was killer. It killed a lot of momentum for the Bucks. It was very frustrating, but horribly officiated. That's besides the point. I don't, I'm not saying that's the main reason why they lost, but it was bad on both sides. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Woman, it's game seven. It's like, okay, I get you want to let them play, but you have to have something. We talked about in the NFL playoffs. They call it the whole, the one way, the whole fucking year where you can't touch anybody. And then all of a sudden, it's like, holy shit, we can mug guys. There's got to be some base level of refereeing. Like, yeah, I don't want the whistle to decide the game, but it's also like, man, this is kind of blatant how ridiculous this shit is. It's kind of like, man, Giannis got mauled. There was a play where I can't remember which game it was. Someone got hit in the fucking head, and they were yeah. like, oh, I should play on. It's all good. It's game seven. It's like, <laughs> come on, guys. Like, we can call some shit right here. We don't always have to just let them do whatever the fuck they want because we're scared to be the blame of the game. Yeah. And uh, you, you got to give a lot of credit to Boston, man. I feel like after game five, that was a hard one to swallow. It yeah. really was at home. Um, it's that heartbreaker where Giannis was just one of those games where you couldn't do anything about it, 40-plus points. And <laughs> game six, two, two one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And But they came back, dude. They they won game six, forced the game seven, and they, they – the job bro like i i didn't think so i thought they were dead in the waters after game five and they were gonna lose game six going into milwaukee but this team showed some real guts by everybody and it was a group effort you didn't have to look to tatum to be the hero they all played as a collective and they've kind of shown it this year they've kind of been the one team in the playoffs who the the struggles that they had matches up with their talent. Like right now, like, yeah, they're a great team, but everyone remembers how they started. Max, it started off Rocky. It was to a point like, okay, like does this guy, you know how to coach. Should we trade Tatum and Brown? Like, what are we doing here? So they've gone through it this season and they've, they've kind of just shown to prove in it every single series. It's like net series. Oh, Everyone shouldn't play the Nets. Everyone was running away from the Nets. He said, fuck it. We want that smoke. Swept they ass. And then you got the defending champs and you take care of business. They've seemed to also catch teams at the right time. Like they caught the Bucks yeah. without Middleton, who's their second best player. And that's big. There's no denying that. But the Celtics were gritty. They stole game four. They fucking lose a heartbreaker in game five. And then Giannis is coming out on fire. He's like 20 points the first quarter. I stupidly took the Tatum under that game. I was like, man, if they're going to lose this game, but Tatum came out, he dueled Giannis. He beat Giannis. And then game seven happened, and, you know, game seven is crazy. Anything can happen, right? And, I mean, if you're the Bucks, you just got to think about, man, if we kind of wasted this year, not a waste of a year, but just unfortunate luck. You see Grayson Allen out there. He's one for fucking 13 the last two games. That's not going to cut it. It's like everyone on the Celtics seemed to excel with the pressure on in the game six and seven, and the Bucks kind of shrinked other than Giannis including Middleton, including Lopez, who kind of looks like a shell of himself. The yeah. Bucks kind of need to grab some players, man. They're too top heavy. It's not like a Phoenix Suns who kind of have a lot of guys, but, you know, depending on today, it's kind of hard to say a lot of guys is a good thing. It, the, the thing that sucks with Milwaukee is like, yeah, Grayson Allen had a bad shooting night. Um, Pat Connaughton didn't really show up this game. <laughs> everyone but, had a but, bad shooting night. Yeah, everyone did. I mean, even Giannis. But, uh, all those guys bring to the table is defense. I think that's what Bud likes about them. They're all gritty players on defense. And I think you need to be able to sacrifice some of that defense for some scoring. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in the off season, try to add some pieces. I thought they did the right thing this year as bringing the crew back together, run it back. And I wouldn't mind that next year with the whole core, the big three that they have, but they definitely got to get some different pieces. Like, I think it's time to move on from Brooke Lopez. 
as weird and valuable as he is some games, but then another game he's just like he missed so much of the year due to back yeah. problems. Like Bobby Porters is a free agent coming up. George Hill, like I don't know why George Hill's still playing huge minutes in the playoff game. Like he's been right. nothing for them. He's coming off a back injury. Yeah. Milwaukee, the future's still bright. You have the best player in the league, the most unstoppable force. And there's still room for him to get better, man. If he can just, you know, that he, that first game, like game six shot like eight for 10 from the start from the free throws. I like work. If we can get that every fucking night, no. you will pro- probably get some dubs. You probably lose otherwise where his free throws are terrible. But Milwaukee, the future's still bright. And I feel like Bud, again, is going to be back on the hot seat now. Like now you like the honeymoon's over. You won the championship. <laughs> and Bud, like you can criticize him. It's like, hey, man, we can change our like philosophy sometimes. You don't always have to fucking let Brooke Lopez get cooked. By Tatum. We could fight through. We can hedge. I would say this, Max. I, I think you are right from putting him on the hot seat, but I think in reality, he's not going to be on the hot seat. Like, how how long has Doc Rivers lived off that one championship? Yeah, <laughs> like, but I mean, how- look, you go to the Clippers, right, and they're so fucking, like, starved for, like, anything that's stable, right? You go to the Clippers, and then you go 76 or short, equally as starved. I mean, Doc Rivers, man, his seat's got to be fucking hot as shit, man, going into next year. It's ridiculous, bro. He's lived off that one championship where, you know, if you read the reports, it was pretty much like a team that was kind of already bought in. They knew what they had to do. They were like self-coaching, self-policing each other. Yeah. Like, if you're a 76ers fan, I feel like you're the second, like, worst feeling fan of the day or the weekend, right? Like, what, what's worse, to go out like that with James Harden pulling a Ben Simmons or to go out in a 40-piece blowout in a Game 7? What's worse? Uh, I think the first one is worse. Because, really? Yeah, because this is two years of this. <laughs> and it's 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 not – it's they're not the first team and they're not the last team to blow a Game 7 like that. It happens, okay? I mean, I mean two, they're kind of teams, the first team. To- two, teams, two teams, Max, that were in the finals last year – that were in control of both of their series just lost game seven tonight. So it happens. The reason why I say the first one is because that has to be heartbreaking as a fan, how you get two years of two fucking players that just absolutely shit the bed in game seven in big moments to the point where they're not shooting the ball. So do that you want is to, unbelievable? Do you want to hit the Mavs? First, it's just to like we'll stay on the, the game losers. seven. Let, let's hit all the losers. So no, I mean, do you want to so, hit that? You want to hit that game seven before we hit to the 76ers? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's hit let's hit the other game seven. So the other game seven, Mavs and Suns. This one made um, me happy. I was happy. I fucking yeah. can't stand these fucking crybabies in Phoenix. I can't I was stand not them. Happy. I was not ha- happy because I deep down inside I want to see Chris Paul win. But I get it. Fuck them. They beat our ass last year. They uh, talk a lot of shit. They talk they do, a lot of shit. It, Jay Crowder, like, go way to get your nails done pregame, bro. Su- sweet <laughs> stat line. Two for nine. Vintage. I mean, I feel like, you know, I don't blame this on any one player. I just think it's like the worst case possible. Like, we had the worst night of our season. Worst, worst time. Because they've been a machine all year. And maybe part of it is, hey, we've been a machine. We haven't been down a lot by 15 points. And maybe the pressure kind of got to him. It's like, oh, shit, we're down by 15 really fucking quick. Lucas cooking. Let's And it kind of kicked them out of the rhythm, right? You know, like in football, one, you have a game plan. Well, it's like, okay, we're doing good. Oh, shit, we fumbled a snap. We They scored seven. They just went three and out. They scored seven real quick. It's like, holy shit, we're down 14. We can't run the ball anymore. Yeah. That's what I feel like happened to Phoenix. Where they got down so like by so much so fucking quick. It was just like, damn, we can't even execute our game plan anymore. Yeah, it, it was bad. Um, just rocky start. I think that's unacceptable to get blown out like that at home in a game seven, in my opinion. That's yeah. unacceptable. Um I look at I I look at the top, man, from this organization. And um I know a lot of people are maybe gonna disagree with me, but their owner is a piece of shit. He's a cheap, <laughs> racist piece of shit. And I don't you remember the reports that came out this year about about the multiple like racist remarks. Was it and, was it also like, know, like uh, sexual stuff yeah, too? Sexual, some women. Some, yeah, some Dan Snyder like mixed in with uh with 
with uh the who was the Clippers owner? Help me out. Donald Sterling. Donald Sterling all mixed in one kind of vibe. So people know he's a cheap he's a cheap uh owner. So that's the problem here with DeAndre Ayton. That's what I'm yep. hearing. Absolutely. I don't feel like because it's from the front office, they want to pay him. They're like, yeah, we want to keep DeAndre Ayton. I heard it's an owner issue. Well, you can't win then. That you're you're gonna fucking lose if it's the owner. And if I'm right. if I'm Robert uh, Sarver, and I'm like, well, biggest game of his career, two for five, five points, th- three rebounds. Like, what the fuck are we gonna pay this guy for? And then someone signs him to a max. That's just some right. team will offer him a max. Some exactly. team out there, some desperate ass team, Orlando, whatever. What would the fucking Thunder for all I care? Offer him a max. What if it's Dallas? It's like, hey, we would fucking love you in Milwaukee. Dallas, bro. Milwaukee's like, hey, you want a max? Well, it won't work, but we'll get it done. They're like, holy shit, we can't pay him. And then he's gone for nothing. And then this team that's so built on this dude being good. Like, I understand DeAndre Ayton isn't like a number one, a number two guy, but he's like the perfect big in basketball. It's not high. It's not a lot of post up touches. He's just going to play hard. He's going to play good defense. He's going to gobble up rebounds, putbacks. Like, how many games won last year and this year? Do you think he had like eight for 10 shooting, 16 points, 14 rebounds? Bang. That's all you want. That's what you want from the guy. And you know what's cool too? He has talent to actually be like a go to scorer. He has that talent. He has that pedigree. But it's like you said, if if he's gone, you start to veil fucking McGee, Bismack Biombo. Yeah. And I think that was a. That was a real problem, Max, because they weren't playing him. I felt like they didn't play him as much this year as compared to last year. Like, he wasn't getting that many minutes. And for a guy that was so valuable last year in the playoff run, that was the biggest difference this year with this team. DeAndre Ayton wasn't involved and wasn't succeeding like he was last year. And... It starts from the top, the owner. If you have a bad owner, you're probably not going to be that good. And I felt like that's what happened, like with the, with the whole Starver shit, and even like Monty Williams, kind of off, kind of like off page with his players. I don't know if you heard this in his press conference saying that like I ran these guys down to the ground and all this and that and. Uh, I, I mean, they're saying. all young, other than CP3. Right. And, I mean, so like, what are you fucking? What are you talking about, dude? It's just, it's odd, dude. And this is the second year in a row where they lost the series. They were up 2-0. and they were looking in a dominating fashion. So th- the window, I don't know how big this window is. I feel you could close though, old. right yeah, away. It is because we haven't seen this team without Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton. Those are two huge pieces to their success. And those guys easily can be gone next year. I mean, I think Chris will be back because he thinks this is the best place for him to win a championship. But, like, what about the blame for Devin Booker? Does he get some blame in this? Because, look, like, I understand this was, like, the worst case game. I've said it. But does Booker need to get even better? Like, is there still room for him to grow and... You know, I, Booker's a good player. He rubs me the wrong way because he's the most fucking crybaby player I've seen in a while when it comes to getting calls, and it just annoys me. He talks a lot of shit, but then he does shit dirty. But where's Booker in this? Like, he's supposed to be the superstar top guy. Three for 14 in a game seven, 10 points? That's not going to get it done. I know he's been good on big stages, but I just I just wonder where Devin Booker plays into this. Can he get disgruntled if DeAndre Ayton's not back? Like I feel I like the Suns are on a slippery sl- fucking slope if they don't bring Aiden back and the ownership does their stupid shit they do. They traded a guy like a guy in Jalen Smith, I believe, this year for nothing, just because they were like, "Fuck it, we don't want to pay him a little extra money." Who's a lottery pick who played decent at points? It's like you said, man. Shamit's gonna be coming up soon. Cameron Payne was a show of himself. That, yeah, because that shit matters, Max. It's the difference between. All the all the great organizations from owner top down or GM whatever, they know how to pivot. They know how to pivot off different guys. I always say this in football. It's like, are you gonna be able to pivot off a guy like Baker Mayfield and admit like, hey, we were fucking wrong. We made the wrong pick. Let's move on. Let's pivot on to something else instead of being like, 
oh man, like that pride with you. Like, oh, this is our guy though. We picked them number one. We invested so much money into him. Who fucking cares, bro? It didn't work out. You took a L. Like, you're not going to go 100%. And that's what the Suns need to realize, bro. Like, they need to make moves accordingly. And we'll see what happens. Like, for instance, like the Warriors, they move so strategically and for the future and for now. Mm -hmm. Like, it's completely different sides of the spectrum here. Yeah, it's it's weird with the Warriors because we see the old guard of Clay, Draymond, Steph, and then it's like we got Poole, Kaminga, Moody, right. all coming up the ranks. And it seems like the way the Warriors are positioned, it's like, first of all, they'll foot the fucking bill for a winner. They don't care. They're like, right. okay, we, we got $180 million cap. We have to pay $100 million in the tax. No problem. We'll pay it. We'll win because this is what we care about is winning. You can't say that for the Suns. They got Cameron Payne. I mean, excuse me, Cameron Johnson, Juan. He's coming up too soon. So you're going to just be a little pre like one of their best players, I would say, three and D guys. Like, what are we going to get rid of him? What are we going to do? What, like, what the, and they got Jay Crowder who's making money, who's kind of important to what they do. So, how did the Suns sustain this? It seemed like they had a two year really good window. And it's all, it's pretty contingent on Aiden coming back. And we have no freaking clue what they're going to do. We'll see what happens, man. That was unacceptable, though. I don't know what the future holds. Yeah, for the you, Suns. you can't get blown out by 40, bro. Like, it was over by halftime. And I mean, Luke, the Mavs? I mean, shout out to Spencer Dinwiddie, bro, who fucking game <laughs> seven of his life, really. Yeah. Like, you don't expect 30 from him. Luca was 35 and three quarters. He just, he was an orchestrator. He did whatever he wanted. I like Jalen Brunson played good. They didn't even shoot the ball that freaking good, Dallas. Like, some of their key guys shot the ball bad, like Bullock and Finney Smith. And but they were in Phoenix. <laughs> they took that crowd out so fucking fast. It warmed my heart, man, because I could not stand the Suns. <laughs> I think they're a fab, like a really freaking good team, the Suns. Like, fantastic. They're a better team than the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. But today, they were not. And it sometimes timing matters in the NBA. It's like Chris Paul gets hurt when one, the worst possible fucking time. You can take that injury in round one, but you can't take it in a conference final game five where you need them to win. Right. And it's so crazy how that series went, Max. After two games, me and you are already saying, yeah, uh, Dallas probably going to pack it up. Just going to show you how, how crazy things can flip. Man. After four <laughs> games, we're like, Dallas got all the momentum. Game five, they get fucking blown out. We're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Phoenix is going to come back. Dallas blows them out. Then we're like, holy shit, anything can happen. I would have picked the Mavericks before the game. I just had that much faith in Luka. And I kind of think Devin Booker might be looked at a little differently after this game. He's still a really great player, all-star. Yeah. But before CP3 got there, he was kind of not a winner. Yeah. So people were kind of um, – let's go on to Dallas just for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, people were on this whole Dallas Maverick train as far as not being a good team, but I did hear a lot of talks before the season talking about – a player like Luca on how good he is, it's usually it usually happens in this area of their career where they over over su- succeed and they make it to like the conference finals or the finals because they're just so fucking good. And I think that's what ha- that's what's happening right now. So like for instance, what like LeBron making it to the yeah. finals against the Spurs at a young age. So if Luca does that, is he just going to be a victim of his own success in future years? We'll say next year, it's like, damn, it's the same fucking Mavs team. They get bounced by a really good Clipper team. And it's like, Luca can't get the job done. It's like, no, that's actually that his team still sucks. Yeah. He just didn't have 50 every freaking game. Right. And that's what I agree with you on. Luca is going to be... He's right now, he's kind of the victim of his own success because, dude, I don't think the Mavericks, I think the Mavericks have the worst roster out of the four teams remaining, easily. No doubt, no doubt. And they don't even have Tim Hardaway, like who's a like, good secondary shot maker. They have no really good big. Kleber's cool. They're using Bertans out there. They're depending, yeah, they're depending on fucking Bertans, bro. Like <laughs> Bertans and like Jalen Brunson, who's been surprising, but he's nothing. I wouldn't say he's anything super special. I think they're, they're literally on the legs of Dinwiddie and Brunson having big games. That's when they're at their best is when but those when, two guys are balling. Look, I think Dallas can be dangerous. I would still pick Golden State to win that series because they're kind of coming together at the right time. And you, 
you kind of have guys you can throw at Luca. You can throw the numbers. You can throw Wiggins, Kaminga, Moody, fucking Clay. It's like we're saying last last podcast, strength in numbers. They kind of they're back at that point where they just can throw so many things at you. So Is there a lineups. better guy one on one to guard Luca than Draymond? Yeah, and uh, Draymond's not even gonna start up on him. They'll be like, okay, we'll we'll put Clay on him. We'll put uh, Wiggins. Uh, have some Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah, maybe put some uh Kaminga on him sometimes. I only some say Draymond because he's he's pretty big, six five, Lucas six eight, so little, but he's strong as a bull, got long arms. And look, you don't need someone exceptionally athletic to guard Luca. You need someone who's right. strong and can move their feet, and that's what Draymond can do still. Yeah, and someone that's disciplined. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll see how that series goes. Probably do a little breakdown midweek. I don't I don't think the series starts. Until Tuesday, Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah, one of them. Yeah, one of them starts on Wednesday. Probably the other one starts on Tuesday. We'll see how that goes. But uh, congrats to the Mavs, dude. Um, it's just one of those moments where a superstar in the making, they make it farther than you think, and that's just how good he is. I, I just feel like he's in his 07 LeBron stage right now, like carrying a team and succeeding. So we'll see how far he goes. <laughs> What's the opposite of a guy who like exceeds his expectations? Is it someone who constantly <laughs> under fucking achieves no matter if he's wearing a rocket jersey, thunder jersey, nets jersey, 76er jersey? I don't know if that's a good enough segue, but I thought yeah. it was pretty it was pretty slick. Pretty good. <laughs> um what was not good is James Harden's performance. We kind of got into it earlier, but uh Sixers got beaten by the Miami uh, Miami Heat. Eh. It wasn't as close as it looked. It didn't. It, look, man, I, I think the one person that I feel bad for is Joel Embiid out of anybody. Um, I, I really do. F- I, I feel like he's taken it on the chin with a lot of these situations that the organization is sending them up to succeed. I think the one one mix, uh, first mistake that they made, Max, was obviously letting go of Jimmy Butler. I don't know why or who made that decision. To quote and Jimmy, was, Tobias yeah. over me. Incorrect. Yeah. You are you are correct, Jimmy. They fucked up there. Yeah. The next thing they would do is probably give Ben Simmons all that money. Yeah. Uh, and then they would trade trading Seth Curry along with Ben Simmons would be the third big fuck up. Because Ben for James Harden, that's fine. Like looking back, it's like yeah, that's pretty equal. You're getting yeah. a guy who can't even fucking play because whatever bullshit ails him this week, and you got a guy who can't ever play good in a big moment. And one, I want to say this: Can we blame this whole fucking series on James Harden? Like, what's the blame percentage at? I would say it's like eighty. You would give ten to Joel being hurt the first two games, right? Right. That but plays they tied a part. It. And then, and again, the biggest time, and it, I know a lot, not a lot of people watched our James Harden video. Our whole point of the video was when we wanted to recap that he's been a fucking bum. That people just forget. That people give him the pass for. But th- the big thing was, hey, this is his chance. He can write the record. He can be like, you know what? My team needs me. I'm going to show up. And when, what the fuck did he do game six? Nowhere to be found. Just when it gets hard. Harden doesn't get going. In the video, we said when the going gets tough, Harden must get going. But whenever it's hard one, well, hard, James Harden just takes yeah. a takes a light. You know, yeah. I don't give a fuck. You had nine assists. Your job, being you've been considered the best score ISO guy ever. Fucking score the ball. But you know what? I guess you didn't take care of your body. I guess you're so little fucking porky out of shape. You can't do it. And that's cool. I don't buy that shit. I don't buy that's that. That's cool, shit, James. Man. And you know what? Joel Embiid said in his press conference, he's not that guy anymore. I'm sure that is fucking. <laughs> why would you trade for him then? <laughs> Just fucking wait a year. Let him leave. He was in a tough position, man, in that press conference. I'm, I'm sure he's like, pissed off, though. He's got to be fuck pissed. Yeah. Fuck yeah. This guy just had a fucking MVP caliber fucking season that was wasted. Straight up wasted. I can give credit one to Maxi for going nine for 22 for 20 points because at Maxie, least you fucking go down swinging. Yeah. Maxi's the second best player on that team. There's it's no like Kobe, Kobe said it. If I, I got mad at myself because I stopped shooting after a certain amount, even though I was missing, I would have rather Harden go four for 20 fucking four 
then go four for nine, one shot in the second half. And I don't know if you remember the shot. It was fucking done. The game was done when he shot it. It was like a step back three and nothing really mattered. Right. It's just unbelievable, dude. I feel bad for Philly fans. I feel bad for Danny Green, who tore his ACL in like the first two minutes of the game. Speedy recovery to him. But you put all this stock in James Harden. Gerald Morey was like, well, that's my boy. Don't pay this guy. Don't give this guy the max. And Harden's going to he's gonna opt in because he won't he's get that much. In. But again, it's like Harden, if you really care about winning, you don't have to do it. What the fuck do you need another $20 million for? Don't you want to win? Yeah. But, you know, James Harden might be Carmelo for all we know. He might just care more about that bag. And then he'll be out of the league in a year. And then people will be like, why is he out of the league? So Who is he over, out? So over James Harden. James Harden window ended a long time ago in Houston with uh, Chris Paul getting hurt game six. That was his fate. That was his best chance to win. That was his best team. That was his best form as a player. And he ruined it. He fucked it up. Okay? Yeah, Mike D'Antoni as a coach. They shot shitty in game seven to lose the Golden State. That was the golden opportunity. And that was it. Ever since then, it has been down fucking hill. Okay? And there's no surprise. I don't, Like, we shouldn't be surprised here, Max. We really shouldn't. We did the research. We went back. We've been knowing this about James Harden. Every big game that this guy fucking plays, he crumbles under pressure, whether it's turnovers, whether it's bad shooting performances, whether it's the biggest play of the game and he doesn't come through. Look, how about every not chasing a fucking rebound? Yeah. How about just watching Jimmy Butler shoot a three? And this is the perfect like parallel to draw. If you watch Jimmy Butler in that game and watch James Harden, you would 100% know who the better fucking player is and what guy cares more. Jimmy yeah. Butler does the little things that superstars need to do. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, superstar, right? Was he afraid to rebound one? Was he afraid to get his hands dirty? No. When the fuck does James Harden even give the effort that other superstars give? Think about Giannis diving for a loose ball one or freaking... I don't know, like someone like Shaq even going to the stands for a loose ball. When the fuck does Harden do shit like that? It's like you have to fucking care. Box out, chase the fucking ball. Don't just sit in it and then point to somebody. It's just disgusting, bro. It just pisses me off that this dude, like he's finally getting some flack. But again, it's nowhere near what other guys would get in this position. Yeah. He just always seems to escape. Get a pass. What's the pass this year? Embiid was hurt. Two games. Fuck them. Right. Yeah. Embiid was hurt. It's like unbelievable. And l like I said, I, I feel so bad for Embiid, man. I really do. He's had, he's probably been one of the worst dealt what? with superstars yeah. in the league, like that you can count on right now. Like, who has been managed worse than pr maybe LeBron I mean, in Cleveland? Nah, I don't know. I mean, I get. I mean, I would say LeBron. They did less for, but 76ers have just swung so many times and missed. Like going back to Fultz. How about the Horford, Tobias, Ben Simmons starting lineup fiasco? To Josh Ben Simmons, and, to Josh Richardson. How about just the Ben Simmons in general was a fucking whiff. Not taking Tatum. Just uh, paying yeah. Tobias two hundred million dollars. Yeah. Just whiff Hiring after whiff. Doc Rivers. Yeah, that what's I would go with the higher keeping Doc after this fucking thing. Have and it's not Doc. It's not real. I can't say Doc's as much to blame because he didn't go out and get Harden. But still, like you can point to be like, hey, why are you playing DeAndre Jordan? Why is our offense this stagnant? Why, 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 why? Like, why can't you get this fat ass James Harden motivated? And we're talking about the window uh, duration of the Phoenix Suns. You got to look at the window from Joel and. And beats perspective. Do they do they is have a window? Or is it like I a mean, fucking like screen door? They're like, does this work? Right. Ooh. It's super unknown though, Max, because if I'm looking at it as a GM and I'm the GM of the 76ers, how long do you really have this MVP caliber guy in Joel Embiid? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm I look, I'm not saying that he's gonna fall off the face of the earth, but let's be real here, Max. He's a seven footer. He's had injuries every single year. One, what if he just Big gets pissed like off? That. What if he's just yeah. like, I'm done. I'm done with you guys. You guys fucking trashed my career for too long. 
And I would say it's not a window one. It's like an opening. And there's like a, it's like you don't know if the window's going to slam shut and break your hand. That's how the 76ers are. It's like there's an open window. There's a trophy. Window might slam and break your hand. Here it is. Like you've no fucking clue with this team, man. And I'm so fucking glad, bro. Me and you didn't get up on here because there's proof on the podcast when that trade happened that you remember when Joel and James Harden were going off like against the fucking Knicks. Yeah. It's like, was oh, like, oh my oh. God. God squad. God duo. Oh my God. It's a fucking match made in heaven. Everyone's talking about yeah. Harden looks so good. I'm like, yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> How good did he look on the nets that first fucking week? And then what happened? It just tails off with this guy. He doesn't care. I don't know if he, like I want I don't want to say I say you don't care but like can you prove me wrong can you do that little shit to get your team over the hump please no. come on man it's ridiculous you're a hall of famer first ballot and you do shit like this in the playoff I can't think of a hall of famer who is like this type of star James Harden was who did this shit consistently in the playoffs yeah so Heat move on. I still don't know how fucking good the Heat yeah, are. I'm correct. Still, I Agree. still don't know. I still don't know. Uh, Jimmy Butler, yeah. They're, look, they're a collective group, but deep down inside, I just, one, I like we just went over, just Philadelphia is turmoil right now, in my opinion. And number two, I just feel like they're so Tyler Hero dependent. Like, if that guy doesn't score, they're losing. And I don't like that about them. I feel like their fates are kind of sealed with guys who are like, eh, like Victor Lodipo. We kind of need you to have a big game. You're like, eh. Right. Like, I think Jimmy and Bam are great. I think they're really good. Yeah. I think this Boston series is going to be a little tough for both teams because it's going to be like, wow, Jimmy and Tatum kind of erase each other. And then Jalen Brown, him and Bam kind of erase. Like, it's like a lot of gritty guys. Who are, it's going to be a gritty series for sure. And it's going to be good defense. And it's going to be kind of like what role guys step up. It's like, hey, is Marcus Smart going to outplay Tyler Hero? Is Duncan Robinson going to have an impact? Is Robert Williams going to do good? Grant Williams, what's he about? I feel like Grant Williams is going to be P.J. Tucker if he's not already. <laughs> like a muscu- more muscular P.J. Tucker? Yeah, a little stockier, a little stump. I like to call him stumpy. I feel like they're That's both stumpy, like. though. A little stump. A little stump. Yeah, I feel like. PJ got a little bit more. I on him. tell me this: if this was four years ago and Houston needed a small ball big, they'd be like Grant Williams. You look pretty fucking good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't stand Grant Williams. He's, uh, he's so players. annoying. He's got a his face annoys me, and he was yeah. talking so much shit today. I mean, granted, he kind of he kind of could talk that shit after oh, a game yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, she'll be a great series. Um, excited to see Tatum and Brown see what they put up in the Easter Conference Finals. Like, um, Boston has had numerous success uh, over the past couple of years with Tatum and Brown, and here we are again, Easter Conference Finals. Different coach. This team does have a little bit different vibe to them. They're a little bit more grittier. This this is the most gritty grittiest team that Boston has had in this little era right here. So we'll see. Heat culture versus Boston gritty, new new age Boston gritty should be good, man. Battle of the cultures, that's for sure. Heat culture, Battle Boston culture. Yeah, I'm pulling for the Heat, man. Fuck Do you think stuff. it's funny that Miami has a super blue collar like just culture, and Miami you think it's like Miami. so glitz and glamorous? It's like Skyami, freaking beaches, yeah, like so South that's Beach. The Dolphins. Yeah, yeah Dolph- the Dolphins yeah. wish they had. Finn's culture. They low key had that with Flores, <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, too much, too hard. Yeah. We don't like this." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's move on to the last game we haven't talked about. We'll, we'll sprinkle in the Memphis Grizzlies. Look, it, it was a valiant effort uh, that took some guts to win Game Five, but uh, Game Six it, it got away from them. Clay went off. Clay showed why uh, he's probably a future. First ballot Hall of Famer. Just, it's just dangerous, bro. Like, you don't yeah. want to fuck around with Clay. And I have to say one. This is what I was talking about with, like, Dylan Brooks. I like that he fucking shot 28 times. I was like, fuck it. I can win this game. I Desmond like- Bain. The, him and Desmond Bain were like, fuck that. We're going. If we're going to go out, we're going to go out fucking guns and blazing. Yeah, man. that's what I liked. I liked, man. And it's like, yeah, they just a little like. I guess they do need Josh sometimes. Because, like, in, during that whole fucking run, it was like, well, you need a superstar to shut the crowd up. And they were getting horrible shots. And they could have used John Morant. 
It just yeah. sucks for Memphis. You know, the future's bright. They kind of overachieve in the regular season because, I mean, look, when you're a team that's gritty and plays hard, you can win a lot of games in the NBA, and they have talent. But now it's about growing that talent. Can Jaron Jackson take a step? Can Bain? Jaw's there. Jaw's a superstar. Yeah. We just need to see who's this like guy who's running with them. Yeah. Brandon Clark has some room to grow. Uh, Steven Adams, of- you're awesome. Just keep being you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry you're not around like 10 years ago. Could have really keep used on you. Pushing. Keep on pushing, big dog. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Steven Adams, I feel so bad. One, it's like 15 years ago, they're like, fucking, this guy tough. Yeah. Like, he, he, how much better is he than Kendrick Perkins ever was? Ten times better. I mean, bro, <laughs> if the Celtics had him in the 08, they'd be like, oh, we have a dynasty. Right. <laughs> now they're Definitely. like, how do we play this guy in the fucking but, uh, series? Uh, hopefully, hopefully Memphis continues this success, and it's not just one of these things where the typical young team, they're growing, they'll be back next year. Hopefully it's not a one-year thing, and we never see them back in this situation because uh, at the end of the day, they are Memphis. But uh, I hope not. We'll see. Yeah, I, I hope not either. I, I, I don't would think so. Jaw ja is just like a continuous like playoff performer. Yeah. But, um, Thank God, you know, um, Jordan Poole didn't break the code. Thank yeah. God. He didn't, they were he didn't talking know. some shit. They were talking some shit. Look, they that series is going to have some bad blood when they face off. Again oh, 100 percent. Because 100%. they were already they got Steph talking back at them. Talking okay, about, look. Well, like Steph, you're not tough, my guy. Like, yeah, you're a badass out there, but look, if, if there was yeah, a fight, baby face assassin. If there was a fight between your top five Memphis guys and Warriors guys, bro, Steven Adams, Desmond Bain, I'd throw John there, Brandon Clark, Melton. They knocked the shit out of Golden State. They got no <laughs> they got no it's like you got Draymond, Draymond and GP. Five guys, though. Draymond and GP. Who else? Juan Toscano. Toscano, yeah, Toscano will get up in there. Yeah, Wiggins, Wiggins ain't a fighter. He a lover. Clay, no. <laughs> Maybe Bali, uh, <laughs> Belitza. No, oh, no, uh, I can't say his name right now. Uh, Belitza, whatever his name is. Maybe he's got that like Eastern European thing going on. He'll fight. But uh, they they got some they got some bad blood, dude. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, I like bad blood. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we need and more of that. Oh, yeah. The NBA is missing that. But let's look at the uh, Warriors. So the Warriors are moving on. And uh, they get Clay back. And what do you know? It They're back in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, back where they, I feel like, where they belong. And, uh, I mean, you called it, Max. Uh, you felt like it. they were one of the best teams going into it. Like, that was your pick. And um, right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they are the favorites to win the championship. They are looking the best, and they're going to be going against Luka, the one-man band. And it's kind of scary. I'm leaning towards Golden State right now. I mean, they look dangerous, dude. I I mean, I'm scared, you know, like I've. I would probably lean towards the Warriors. I I don't think Steph right now is as good as Luca or in like in a playoff series can kind of just one man band as much as Luca can. Yeah, he's been but, shooting bad all all playoffs really. But I would say this, Max. When he need when they need like that Steph bucket, he gives it to him. He does. That's what yeah. I've been but I think they're just a better matchup because they're going to go a little smaller like when they were playing Adams, I was like, this isn't smart, you know, and they kind of did out of desperation, but yeah. I think the Mavericks can pose a little bit more problems on defense than the, um, than the, um, than the Grizzlies, Grizzlies could. I mean, I was, I was four and oh in my picks. I know it didn't go down the way I went. I picked the Mavs. I picked the Celtics. I picked the heat. I picked the Warriors. So I'm feeling kind of good about that, but I don't want the Warriors to go back. I kind of want the Mavs, even though I hate Mavericks because I lived in Dallas and I have some <laughs> that that one championship Dirk has is worth like I guess thirty to them. Yeah. But man, Luca's awesome. I was never I wasn't big on him coming out. I was like Eastern European guy, kind of scared. Take eight and take the big. Yeah, it kind of worked out for both teams. They both had chances. I mean, the Suns could have won a championship last year. It would have been like, yeah, we we pick eight and again. Mm. But Luca's. Fucking special, man. He's Baron Trey Young. 
right. way better, right? Yeah, it's not even close. Um, not not trying to take away anything from Trey, but Luca's on a whole nother planet. Is he a better one man band than Giannis? No. I think he's. I think what makes. I think he's a little tougher to guard than Giannis. Yeah. Giannis is kind of like no one can stand for. Like you can kind of build a wall and just. It's just, but it's not like you have to worry about him shooting. You know what I mean? Luca's kind of like, damn, he can go off the dribble and drive, and you can shoot. Right. Be honest, it's more like I'm just brute force. I can get and do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> and Luca, look, you talk about Devin Booker, like how good, how much better can he get? On Luca, on the other hand, he can still get better. That's the scary thing. I think it's just there's another level. Getting shaped there's a little bit. Level to this. Yeah, yeah, there's another level. But um, yeah, I'm leaning towards Golden State, man. Uh, the, the one man band with Luca, it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, defensively, what the Warriors do. Uh, overall, I'm I'm excited for the for the conference finals already, dude. Um, we'll see what. We'll Who see are you what pulling for? I know you're pulling for the Heat. We we're not pulling for Boston under any circumstance. No. So you're going Mavs or Warriors? I'm gonna be pulling for the Mavs. Yeah, deep down inside, I'm gonna be pulling for the Mavs, just because I hate the Warriors. I really do. Besides Draymond, I I, I can't stand Warrior fans. And everyone's gonna hop on the wagon. Um, we back, we back. But, uh, I have no problem uh, r- rooting for Jimmy Butler. No, I, I want. I, Jimmy. Like- I think Jimmy's the one guy I want to get one right. Luca's got plenty of time. I want Jimmy yeah. to get his. Yeah, Jimmy deserves it. He's a hard worker, dude. I don't want the Celtics to get one up on the Lakers, and I know they're gonna say the ten in Minneapolis don't count. So how about the fucking twenty you guys got? When there was like three teams in the NBA or ten yeah. teams, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just a theory. Yeah. yeah, Bill Simmons was already fucking crying after Game Five, saying it was over. <laughs> I know he's fucking probably fucking happy as shit. But uh, fuck Boston. I think that's gonna do it for the pod. <laughs> uh, that's what I think to you too today. I was like, <laughs> fuck Boston. Yeah, fuck Boston. But um, I think that's gonna do it for the pod. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, comment down below any thoughts, opinions, or anything like that. Write it down. Anything you want to uh, talk about, let us know. Topic, yeah. question. Let us let us know, man. DMs are open. You always catch us on social slide, media. Slide in there, coach. Slide in there. Slide, slide in the DMs. Uh, that is at Max underscore Juan Cast. Twitter, IG. Um, YouTube audio listeners, uh, you can always ask a question on there. Write a review on uh, Apple I- iTunes, uh, five star rate us. You already should know that. But, um, one last thing, Max, <laughs> were you laughing when you seen that Tua pass highlight? It's a Tyreek. <laughs> Do you, can you? Ex- I read the comments, and people are like, Why are they laughing? Well, tell me why they're laughing, one. Because <laughs> it was under thrown, maybe time. like t- by like yeah. twenty yards. The fucking noodle arm at its fucking peak, right there. Fucking that was, that, that it made was me so smile because I thought it was like I couldn't believe it. I woke up and I seen it without <laughs> seeing any context, Max. Like I know I saw the, it too. I was that like, was the first and the first thing that popped in my head. Was geez, people are gonna roast this video because it's an underthrown ball. Some people, like I heard some people talking about it, Max, and they're like, "That wasn't even my first reaction to it. It was just I, I, I started to notice it when the comment section started going in. I I'm noticed like, it, bro. and I was like, "Damn, that's kind of underthrown." I was like, "Yeah, I don't, people won't, people won't care." And I looked back and I was like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> jeez, uh, football season is uh couldn't couldn't come any fucking quicker, bro." But uh, we'll enjoy the playoffs till then. Uh, Max, any last words? One, if you want, join me on my join me on the basketball conference finals thoughts. We're gonna post tomorrow. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, I'm we down. only got two I'm series. Down. We can get two, yeah. two and two. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll post that. But um, yeah, should be good. I'm leaning towards Warriors, and then I don't know as far as the analysts. Yeah, like the say, rational side. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, that was tough. 
But um, we'll see you guys either Wednesday or Thursday, one of those days during the week. All right. Peace. Thank <music> you.